we're going to issue commands to do things on our computer and the first basic thing that we're going to do is explore the file system. So the file system is, uh, in a simple terms, is made up of a set of directories and files. Okay? So let's do something with directories and files to get started. Uh, first command we'll try is pwd. And you type the command and press enter and it shows some output. PWD tells me about my present working directory. Okay. PWD, my present working directory. When I execute commands, I am in some directory when I execute them. Which directory? Well, PWD tells me I am in the directory called slash home slash student. That's typical for a user named student to be initially in the directory called slash home and followed by the username student. To view contents of directories, to list the files inside a current directory, we can use the program ls. ls lists the contents of a directory and in this case shows an output showing uh, five, different, five different entries. On your terminal, it may be different than mine. should be very similar, but it may be slightly different. We, our computers, uh, some things have changed on some of them. But you should see something like that. You need to ask questions as we go, otherwise I'll keep going. Put your hand up or just yell out if there's a problem. I cannot see everyone at the back, but I'll stay seated so I can um, type better. ls shows us the list of files and directories in our current directory. We'll look at that in detail in a moment. Um, a hint, in this case, the blue ones are directories, the other ones are files. So there are three directories or subdirectories. In Windows you call them folders, maybe, but here we call them directories. So there are three subdirectories. Let's change into one, the one called ITS332. So change directory, we use CD, followed by the directory name. CD into ITS332, change into that directory. Press enter. PWD. Now you'll see I'm in slash home slash student slash ITS332. So this represents your current directory and it's uh, what we call a full path or an absolute path. It's saying relative to the, the base of the file system or the root of the file system, we're inside the ITS332 directory, which is inside the student directory, which is inside the home directory. And the home directory is inside the root of the file system, the root directory. We'll see some more about the exact structure later, but let's just maneuver about the, the file system. How do you go back? I was in home slash student, now I'm in home student ITS332. How do I go back to home slash student? CD. We can give this, the full, sorry, the full path to change to. CD into slash home slash student. Note the difference of our two CD examples. The first one, we CD into ITS332. There is no slash at the front. This is a relative path. Change into the directory ITS332 relative to where we are. There's no slash here. Whereas the second case was change into the absolute directory slash home slash student which is relative to the root. So here we gave the full path. We can use either, a relative or an absolute path. There's other ways to maneuver about. Let's go back into ITS332. So 
So to get back to student, we can think we have a hierarchy of directories. And a shortcut to go up in the hierarchy is cd dot dot. Try it. Try it and see where you'll end up. So we have directories and you think of it as a tree. There's a root and then there's subdirectories and subdirectories and so on. So we think that we can move down in the tree and move back up in the tree. To move up, we use the special directory dot dot. Means go up a directory. You don't need to, but just to show that it, it stays um, at the top of the screen, I'm going to use the, the uh, command clear. You don't need to do that. Clear will just bring me to the top of the screen. It will clear what we currently have. And I'll do some things again. Currently, so very simple concepts. We start in slash home slash student. We change into ITS 332 using a relative directory. We're in home student ITS 332. Then we go back. We CD up in the hierarchy which takes us back to slash home slash student. Let's explore a bit more of the directories. What about, let's go to the root of the file system, which is just slash. In Windows, if you're a Windows user, the root you'll often recognize as C drive, like C colon slash, or what, uh, that's the topmost uh, directory in our file system. Have a look. LS. So in the root of our file system, we have a number of subdirectories and a few files even. The blue ones are subdirectories. Bin, boot, home, media, var, and others. These are storing some of our user files, and we'll note that inside the home directory, the user files are stored, where most of the others are storing parts of the operating system and applications. You don't need to know what all of these subdirectories do. I'll show you a slide lately, later with an explanation, but these are just subdirectories storing things like the operating system files, applications, uh, user files. Go back to your original directory, home slash student, which we call our home directory. If I'm the student user, my home directory is where I start in the terminal, which is typically slash home slash the username. Go back there. So if I'm in the root to go home, different ways. CD home slash student, because I know that's this, the relative directory I want to go to. And I'm back in home slash student. Or slightly different, I'm currently in root cd slash home slash student and again gets me back to home. What's the difference here between cd home slash student, cd slash home slash student? In this case it has the same effect. This one is a relative, relative to where we start from, where we're starting in the root directory. So relative to that go to home and student. Whereas this is an absolute path. It ignores where we start from. In this case, it gives us the same result. Let's go to the root directory. There are a few shortcuts we can use. Instead of typing slash home slash student, 
I'll clear. I'm in the root directory. A shortcut for your home directory is this tilde character, the squiggly line. Tilde, I call it. That is used to replace your home directory. Try it. Okay, so there's a shortcut. If you ever want to refer to your home directory, you can use the tilde character. For example, we go back to the root. cd tilde slash ITS332 means change into the directory which is my home and the subdirectory ITS332. So tilde really is replaced with home slash student. So that use it as a shortcut to, to go home. And the faster way to go home is just type CD. CD with no parameters will take you home. Okay. So just an alternative. No matter where you are on the file system, no matter which directory you're in, if you want to get to your home directory, just type CD and enter and you'll get there. Any questions so far? Most of the commands we'll go through, we'll just use a few examples of them. There are many more features that most commands have that we will not cover. We'll show you how to read about the features later. We can move around. Maybe, what does the file system look like? We said in the root directory, there are some subdirectories. I've got a slide that tries to capture those subdirectories. Or some of them. It's usually common across different uh, Unix and Linux based operating systems. These slides are on, your, uh, on the website and on actually the ITS332 directory, but I'll go direct to one of them. The, the file system hierarchy usually has these common subdirectories of bin, home, lib, and so on. Bin is short for binary. Usually stores applications, binary applications. So if you look in the bin directory, you'll find many applications. Home is where your home is. Your home directory. So there can be many users on a single computer. The typical place for their home directories will be home slash username. In Windows, what's the home directory? I don't have Windows. Can anyone tell me? Where do you find your home directory in Windows? Or in OS X? In, in Mac, it's slash users slash the username, I think. Uh, you think, I think if you look in a Mac, you'll actually see there is a home directory, but it doesn't use that. It uses slash users. In Windows, I can't remember, is it slash, slash users? Or so, user files or something? Yeah. Document, yeah. So I think those who use Windows can find their home directory. I cannot. Lib is short for libraries. Libraries are files which usually applications share. In Windows, you'll know them usually as DLL, DLLs. Okay? You'll have an application in EXE, and it may use a library of, of ex executable code in a DLL file. Okay? In Unix systems, we also have libraries which different applications share. Okay? Usually, in the basics, we don't deal with the bin and the lib directory. The slash root directory don't confuse that with the slash directory. Slash root is the home of the root user. So there is a root user that is an administrator uh, called root. In Windows, usually it's called administrator. Okay. So they have a special home directory called slash root. Uh, we skipped over some. ETC usually cont cont contains configuration files. 
If you want to change something in the operating system, in Windows you use something like the registry. There are registry settings and you can edit those registry, registry settings. In most Unix systems, the configuration of the operating system is done via text files. And most of them are in the etc directory. Slash user is really repeats what we see here but a different level. So we see binaries or applications, libraries, and some source and other files, which are again applications and application information. Var is variable things, usually websites. If your computer is a web server, if your computer is an email server, your emails will be stored here. There's usually a temp directory, and there are others. Okay. You don't need to know them. Uh, and it may be different on different systems, but often we'll see some of these common directories. Some of them are explained there, or, or very brief explanation. Let's go back into our file system. Let's go home. Let's make a directory. We make a directory using mkdir. Make mk for make dir directory. And then the directory name. Whatever you like. You don't have to copy me. Make a directory. Make sure you do it in your home directory. Okay. Uh, for those that come in, make sure they have tmux set up. Yep. tmux, you'll help him with tmux. And you'll help him with tmux. Okay, Corinne? Good. Make a directory, it doesn't matter what you call it. But the output should be nothing. See, when I ran make directory, it just returns to what we call the prompt. There's no warning message or error message. If you see something different from this, something went wrong probably. If you were in the wrong directory, for example, I was in the root directory and I tried make directory ABC, I get an error message. You cannot create that directory. Permission denied. It means you, as, this, as the logged in user, do not have uh, the permissions to create a directory called ABC in this location. We're not going to talk about permissions, but I think you can uh, guess that some users can uh, are restricted in what they can do on the file system. You, as the normal user, the student user, cannot delete all files from the file system. You cannot make directories wherever you like. You have limitations. Usually you do it in your home directory. So make sure you're in your home directory. LS, and you should see ABC. You shouldn't see hi. Someone's logged into my computer and, and made a directory. Okay, fine. Won't hurt me. Uh, okay. Make a directory. Let's move on. Delete a directory. RM. RM for remove. MK for make, RM for remove, so delete. And it's gone. Let's move on. So make directory and delete a directory. Now the main things with directories, we can change, we can view our current directory, we can make directories, remove directories. Let's move on to files. Let's create a file. All right, let's start by creating a text file. Um, we'll use a text editor. There are many text editors on your computer. The one we'll use is called Nano, or I will use. Nano is a text editor, and you can pass in a file name, whatever you like. You don't have to use the same file name as mine. And press enter, and it will open up a text editor. Type some message in your text file, 
and then we'll see how to save it. Find him a seat and get him on T-Marks. Type in your text editor, type whatever you like in your text file. So the basic text editor on Windows is Notepad. But there are other text editors. You can install your own. Same on, on our Ubuntu Linux. We have Nano as a simple text editor, but there are many others. It gives us some screen where we can type some text. Now, we're not going to teach you how to use Nano except how to save files and exit. And note down the bottom of the screen it gives you some menu. The carrot, that hat character, means control. So control G is get help. Control X is exit. Control O is save. They are the main ones you need for today. Control O, write. Write the file means save the file. If you want to save the file, control O. It says, do you, which file name do you want to save it as? Well, the same one that I, I gave before, just press enter, and it's saved. If you want to exit, control X. If you try to exit before you save, it will give you some prompt. Do you want to save? Okay. So create a text file. Again, you can put whatever you like into it. You don't have to name it the same as mine. Let's do something with that text file. Yep? How can I change the directory of the save file? How can I change the directory of the save file? You mean put it somewhere else? Yeah. We'll move it. Okay, the question is how, how do I change the directory? Let's see where mine is, or where yours is. Let's do ls. Your file should be there. Okay. Again, you'll see a different set of directories or files than me, but you should see the one you just created. Let's put it somewhere else. So the question was, how do I change directories? Well, we move it to a different directory. MV. My new file. Move. You move something from a source to a destination. Move, MV, your file name. Where do you want to put it? Well, if you want to put it in another directory, type the name of the directory you want to put it in. Move my new file.txt into ITS332 directory. That shifts it into a different directory. LS, it's gone from here, but if I change into ITS332 and LS, it's one of those files amongst that list of files, my new file.txt. So MV move. Move a file from one location to another. All of the commands we're going through are on the reference card, so in a slightly different order, but we'll we'll get through some of them. While we're on MV MV move, we can use it to rename files. Move my new file. Ah, before I go, who can type as fast as me? Okay. Typing on the command line is very time consuming sometimes. There are many shortcuts we can use. Let's try and introduce a few as we go. The first shortcut which I find very useful All right, there's a set of files in my directory. I want to move my new file somewhere else. So I type MV for move, and then I start to type the file name, M, for my new file. And the command line has an autocomplete feature. You know, when you're searching Google, you t start typing in the keyword, it presents options to autocomplete. 
Well, to get autocomplete in the command line, press tab, the tab character on your keyboard. If it does nothing, I just press tab, you didn't see it, but nothing changed, it means I cannot autocomplete that. It means there's no unique file that starts with M. I type the next letter in the file name, my new file, MY, press tab, it autocompletes. Why? Because in this directory, there were two files that start with M. When I press tab after typing M, it couldn't determine which one I wanted. But after I typed in Y, M Y, and press tab, it auto completes to the one that matches. There's only one file that starts with M Y, so that must be the one I want. So use tab, start to use it all the time because it uh, saves typing, makes your life easier. If you, I'll try again. If you press tab, nothing happens. If you press tab twice, it will list the options. Okay, I've got MVM. I press tab two times. And the command line shows me the two files that start with M. Just to remind me that in this directory there are two files that start with M. Ah, I now type Y, press tab, and auto-completes. So if auto-complete doesn't work, press tab again and it will give you options of what starts with those particular letters. Now what are we doing? Renaming a file. Renaming a file is the same as moving a file from one name to another name. MV my file name to new name, whatever you want to call it, which is rename. And now my new file has disappeared. I now have a file called newname.txt. So MV is used for moving a file between directories as well as renaming files. While we're there, let's, let's copy the file, cp. cp for copy. So cp, the file name, the source file, the one you want to copy, and the destination, the new one you want to create, which is going to be identical to the source. And if I do ls, I'll see, hopefully, that this new one exists. Now, I'll come back to ls. We're going all over the place, but ls, we can pass parameters. If I do ls, it shows me all the files and subdirectories. What if I just want to see the text files? we can use a wildcard like this. List all files which match any character, star means any character, it's a wildcard, but finish with, finishes with .txt. Someone deleted my copy. I'm going to find out soon. Alright, we'll try again. You can do it better than me. I've got a file and I can copy it. Please don't delete it. Okay. LS, as with many, pro many programs, will take a parameter uh, to filter out which one's the list. And star is what we call wildcard, meaning match any value. 
So star dot txt means any value that ends with dot txt. You can use star in different ways, and there are in fact other patterns that we can match. LSC star, every file that starts with a C, and uh, you can have more complex patterns. So what have we got? We can copy, we can move or rename, we can delete. What did we delete? RM. Remove. Delete a file is to remove a file from the file system, so RM is the uh, command to delete a file. And it should be gone. Okay. RM removes a file. There's no trash. There's no recycle bin. If you remove, it's gone. Okay. Gone in that uh, you need uh, special techniques if you want to recover it. So it doesn't move into a trash or recycle bin. It's deleted. Okay. So be careful. Don't try and delete important files. Don't try and delete the operating system. Okay. Uh, we can copy, we can move, we can remove, we can edit with nano. Uh, let's go back to some of the commands we know and do a few different things with them. What? Let's come back to ls. ls lists the files. It has many options and on the command line options are usually given as a character following a dash. And we'll see how to find the options. Sorry, I'll just clear and go to the top of the screen. Again, you can do this on your computer. It may be different output, but uh, just try the different commands. ls shows the files. ls minus l shows the files in long format. And to make it, sorry, it doesn't look very good on my screen because my terminal's not big enough. The files wrap around. You can make your terminal bigger to, to make it look nicer on your screen. Okay, but let's try again. LS minus L show the output in long format. Give a lot of details. Star dot txt of the text files. I'll just move it up rather than clearing. Look at this line here. What do you see? It gives them some details about that file. So the file name going back from the right back, the file name, the something about the date and time of the file, sorry, July 25, 10.54. Now with files there are different dates and times associated. There's usually creation time, modification time, when was it last modified, and access time, when was it last accessed. This is the modification time from memory, when it was last modified. 26 is the size of the file in bytes. This file is 26 bytes. Student and student is something about who owns the file. Whose file is it? The first student on the left means who's the user that owns it, and the second one means who's the group. But today we're not going to cover permissions, so we're not going to explain uh, that in any more detail. But the owner of the file, when our computer system may have many users, we need to indicate whose file it is. One I always forget. I'm not going to try and remember. The first set of characters are about permissions. Something telling us about who can read the file. Read means open. Who can write the file means edit, delete, change. And dash means usually it's the third character is execute. So the permissions in Unix are read, write and execute. Read is opening, writing is modifying, executing is executing.
running it. Okay. These ten characters, no, of the ten characters, this, the last nine tell us about permissions on this file. And again, I don't want to spend time on explaining it. Three characters say what the user can do, the next three characters say what the group can do, and the last three characters say what everyone else can do with this file. I'm the user student. I can read and write this file. I cannot execute. Anyone in the group student can read and write this file. They cannot execute. Any user who's not student and not in the student group can only read the file. That's the way we interpret that. You need to go study a little bit more about permissions to, to go into more detail there. That's not for today. The first character indicates the type of file. The main types of files we have are files and directories. I'll go back a directory. Again, very hard to see on my screen, but you will see the blue ones, the first character is a D, meaning this is a directory. And the ones which are not blue, the first character is a dash meaning this is not a directory, it's a file. So that's how you really know if it's a file or directory. Not by the color, but by that first character in the output here, directory or file. So we can view the long format. Uh, what else? What about hidden files? I think you know on, say, on Windows you can have hidden files, ones which are not normally shown but they're actually there. Well, the similar concept we have, uh, what have we got? Uh, copy, what did I have? Do I have a file? Copy my ABC file from my ITS332 directory, so this is the source. I want to copy abc.txt from its332 directory into another file. And I could type, okay, so I'll create a file called another.txt. To make it hidden, put a dot in front of it. do an ls and you won't see dot another dot txt okay so the concept of a hidden file in unix is a file that's name starts with a dot okay. dot files they're not hidden in terms of security usually you can find them quite easily but they're just hidden in terms of convenience they're not listed when we do ls in a, a normal operation. To list it, you need to do ls minus a, minus a for all files, normal files plus hidden files. And you see a bunch of hidden files and directories. And one of them should be the, the one that you just created. ls minus a. List all files. Questions? Too fast? Too slow? Everything okay? Easy? Alright? Okay. We'll move on. You can combine options. Try ls minus a minus l. That is, these dash minus a minus l are just options. You can usually combine them in any order. Not always, but in most cases. List all files, minus A, in long format. Right, doesn't look so nice there. Looks better on your screen.
and there are many other options. Where do you find the options to LS? So now, how do we find help? Well, there are things called manuals or man pages, manual pages. If you know the command, I know the command to list files is ls. To read about all the details, I do man ls. Man is the program that will show you the, the help, the manual for this program. And you can scroll up and down with your keyboard, up and down arrows. Read through this name of this program or command is ls. It lists the directory contents. The syntax is here. And then you go through and it lists all the options. Scroll up and down. Minus A. Do not ignore the entries that start with a dot. Usually there are different formats for specifying options. Just a single dash and A, or two dashes and, an, and a word. Okay, the more verbose uh, description. Many different options there. So if you can remember the command, but not all the options, you use the man page to find those options. Scroll down, read them all. To exit this man page, press Q. Q to quit. Okay. Almost all commands that we will use have a man page. Man, what have we used? RM. Explains the RM command and the many options that you have. Page up and page down will scroll through. So really you just need to remember the commands and then if you want to find the options, use the man page. What if you can't remember the command name? What if you don't know CP is for copying or RM is for deleting? There's a very basic search feature, man minus K and then some keyword. Show me all the man pages which contain in the description delete. Uh, there's a lot. You need to scroll up and down to find. It gives you the name of the command and the, and the description. It's not, not the best of search features, okay? But sometimes it will get you what you're looking for. So there are many commands that refer to delete. So it's a very primitive search for a uh, uh, command. Really, if you want to know a command to do something, probably your best bet is to search on the internet. Okay? How to delete a file in Linux. And it will give you the command. But over time, you'll learn those commands and you'll remember them. Okay. We can move about directories. We can create files. Let's create a few, few more files. Um, Actually, I've got my file. What did I call it? Dot. Uh, file extensions don't matter in Linux or Unix. Up, to, up until now, my examples, I called files .txt. It means nothing .txt. With respect to the operating system, the extensions do not indicate what the file type is. Who did that? Someone's messing with my terminal. That's all right. Uh, how do I attach? back. Uh, what was I saying? File extensions don't matter. The file ABC is a text file. 
just because it's not abc.txt doesn't change the, the contents or the format of the file. All right, some other ways to view a file. Cat. Cat displays the contents of a file. Okay, very quick way to display all the file. When you have a very long file, it just lists all those lines. Uh, what's a very long file? Uh, I can remember a file called services. There's a file in the etc directory called services. Have a look at it. It's just a text file. It doesn't matter about the contents. But when you type, and I'll do it again, cat, and that long file, cat displays everything on the screen. It doesn't stop. So it just scrolls through. Not very convenient in some cases. So there's another command called less. Similar to cat, displays the contents of the file, but it scrolls one page at a time. And you can use your arrow keys to go up and down. And page up, page down. So that's a nicer way to view the contents of a text file. I'll do it again. Less displays a long file page by page. Allows you to scroll to, to exit, press Q, like a man page. Cat displays the contents of a file as is, just displays all of it at once. So we can view files. What else? Uh, you want to see the first line of a file. We can use head, or the first few lines, the head of a file. Head shows by default, I think, the first 10 lines of a file. You can specify how many you want to see. Head minus one. Show me the first one line of a file. Head shows the head of a file. Cat shows the contents. Less shows the contents page by page. Head shows the, the top of the file. Using the minus operator, you can specify how many lines at the top you want to see. And to see the bottom of a file, what do we use? the tail. Tail shows the end of the file. For example, by default the last 10 lines, but we can specify how many lines we want to see. Many things in Linux we use text files. The configuration of the operating system uh, and there are many programs to support the processing of text files because it can help when we want to automate things. Uh, what? Let's find a file. This command called find allows you to search through the file system looking for particular files. The syntax is quite complex, but we'll just give some simple examples. Find, search, in slash home slash student files with name that end with txt. Here's an example. Find the first parameter is where you want to search. Where do you want to start your search? Which directory normally? I want to search in this directory then the next parameters, this dash name says search for files which have the name and I put it in double quotes to, to make sure this stays together, that is anything.txt. Any file that ends with .txt, do you find any? And it searches through the home slash student directory, all the subdirectories it goes through, even the hidden ones, and prints out the list of files that end with txt. So find it can be very powerful to find files on your operating on your file system. We could do a shortcut. Find 
in our home directory instead of having to type slash home slash student and we get the same result. So this is the shortcut for slash home slash student. If you want to search in your current directory you're in, I'll go into ITS 332. Find, if on a search in the current directory, the shortcut for your current directory is dot. This directory. Find, looking in this directory, the current one, and all its subdirectories, all the files with name ending with dot PDF. and it looks in this directory. So dot is a shortcut for this directory, two dots is a shortcut for the directory up. Tilde is a shortcut for your home directory, the squiggly line. Find has many other options, you don't have to search by name, you can search by size, by date, uh, and when you search, you can do things like delete the files that it finds. Let's say you want to delete all the files which were created after some date on your, in your directory. You can use find, I will not do it. There's an option to find based upon date or time. And there's an option to, once you find them, to delete them. So it can be very powerful to, to manipulate uh, your file system. Find looks for any file of any type, but our programs that we run, ls is an application. Okay, ls there's an executable file which implements ls. It's I sometimes we call it a command or an application or a a program. Where is ls? Where is the file, the binary file for ls? different ways to find an application. Which? Which LS? Which tells you uh, which binary file implements this command? Slash bin slash LS. So the LS program is in the slash bin directory. There are others, I think. Where is LS? It's a little bit more complicated that where is. It's searched for not just the program, but also the manual page. LS, the program is in bin. The man page, the help, is this file. You don't need to know about that, but where is will give you more information about a, a program. There are other ways to search, but that's enough for now. Uh, what have we missed? Okay, a couple more on text files. When we did our cat on slash... Uh, I'm using slash etc services as just an example of a text file. We don't care about the content, why it's called this but I just know it's a long text file. How long is it? How long is ETC services? Tell me. First, how many bytes is that file? Find the number of bytes in this file called services in the ETC directory. How big is this services file? Anyone have an answer? Well, a quick way to find ls minus l. Remember, ls lists files, minus l gives us the long format output, and it takes as a parameter we can list all files or list a particular file. And again, it won't display very nicely, but the output 
This file is 19,281 bytes in length. Okay. How many lines? Well, there's a program called WC, word count. This services file contains 605 lines of text. 2,627 words, words are separated by spaces, and 19,281 1, characters. Okay, if you look in that text file, you'll see 600 lines, 2,600 words, and 19,000 characters. And of course, one character is one byte when you store that text file. So it's the size is 19,281 bytes. WC, word count. It's useful to get information about a text file. Uh, let's look at some of this text file. Just look at the first 15 lines of this services file. Just see what's in it. contains a lot of different words. We don't care about it. Um, sometimes we want to search through a file. Find all the lines in a text file which match some particular string. Grep is one way to do that. Grep. Look for the word echo in the file etc services. It uses regular expressions to search through a particular text file. In this case, any line that contains the word echo should be displayed. Of course, if you want to, you can try other words. Echo, I only did echo because I knew there was some lines in there that contained echo. What's missing? Excuse me. We've done directories, files, help, file searching, almost there. Any questions? Search for all, all right, there's your task. Find all PDF files on your computer. Hint, use find. Okay. Find all the PDF files, everything that ends with .pdf, on your computer. See if you can find them. What about lunch? What should we do? What program do you use to find all your PDFs? Okay, find and slash. You need to say where to look for, where to look. Remember the second parameter, or the, our, our programs take parameters. So find is a program, the next things we type in are the parameters. So the first parameter is where to start the search from. If I want to look in my current directory, I use dot. But if I want to look in the entire file system, use slash, because slash is, indicates the root directory. And the name ends with PDF. Okay? So find looking in the root directory and any of its subdirectories, because it also goes through subdirectories, which will be everything, any file that ends with .pdf in the name. 
Some you may see errors like permission denied, meaning you as the student user are not, al not allowed to look in a particular directory. Some directories are restricted. It'll go for a long time, maybe you'll find them. If you want to stop a program, what do you do? Control C. Control C kills a running program. Control C. For lunch today, so we'll go for another 30 or 40 minutes, and for lunch we're just eating in the, the canteen, but SIT will pay. Uh, it's a little bit easier. We're just going to write down what you want, uh, and then we'll order it so it's there on time. A few more shortcuts in the terminal. How do you run a command that you've re recently executed? I just did a find. Use your up and down arrows on your keyboard. If I press the up arrow, it goes to the previous command, the history of commands. Keep pressing up and you scroll through the commands. Up and down will scroll through the history of commands. Uh, what else? If you want to list all the commands, type history. So the, the terminal keeps track of the commands that you've been using. And it shows your history, all the commands you've executed. And it gives a number from, from the start. Uh, you want to execute one of, maybe you typed a real long command, you don't want to type it again. You want to execute a number, a, a command of a particular number. For example, I want to execute command number 104. Exclamation mark 104. Executes that command. Now you need to be careful, you need to know that 104 is the command you want and you get that from the history. Exclamation mark, what's the name? It's called bang. When there's a bang, there's an exclamation. So it's often called the bang character. Bang 104. There are many extensions to that to speed things up which we will not cover.